Welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm Lisa Martin. I'm joined by Arez Bergner, the CEO and co-founder of Lumigo. Arez, welcome to the program. Hey Lisa, thank you for having me. Great to be here. We're excellent. We're going to have a great conversation. We're going to be talking about the growing trend of using cloud native and serverless. But before we do, Arez, give our audience an overview of Lumigo. Excellent. So Lumigo is an observability platform basically allowing a developer architects, the technology person in organization to understand what's going on with his modern cloud, with his serverless, with his uh, cloud native application. So at the end of the day, Lumigo as a SaaS platform allow you to know what's happening, get visibility and be able to get to the root cause of issues many times before they actually hit your production. I saw on your website in terms of speed, getting up and running quickly in four minutes with four clicks. Tell me how developers do this that quickly. Yeah, that's that's a, that's actually a great point because in general, when we talk about the modern cloud, we, we're, we're people are really fed up with deploying agents, long processes of, a, of servers, and more and more we see the trend towards APIs, to, toward code libraries. At the end of the day, at the heart of Lumigo, uh, we build a very strong automation agent, uh, engine based on APIs, based on Lambda layer integration. And this allows a developer to basically connect Lumigo via the APIs in a couple of clicks. It doesn't require code changes, deployment of agents, deployment of services. And this is why it's so fast because it's, it's lightweight. And that's, you know, that's a trend of managed services of serverless and Lumigo is another stone in that, uh, in that wall. Excellent, lightweight key there. Define serverless, what is considered serverless? Mm. Oh, don't get me uh, uh, involved in, in, in dispute of those uh, definitions, but I, I can share my, my view, but this is a, a, anyone I would say have its own definition, but the, the main concept that I see serverless is at the end of the day, really like it says serverless, you don't deploy a server. You don't rent a server, you don't manage a server, you don't deploy an operating system, you don't patch a server, you don't take care of scalability, of high availability. Basically all the chores of managing, of maintaining a server basically go away. Now they don't really go away somebody else is dealing with them. So there is a server, but it's not your server to manage. And, and that someone is a cloud provider, is Amazon, is Microsoft, is Google, is IBM. And, and this is how I view serverless. Basically a managed service that doesn't require to deploy or manage a server and you use it via APIs. And, and if you think about that, in the past, you know, when serverless started, 2015, serverless was function as a service, lambdas, AWS started that. But today in 2021, serverless, yeah, it, it's function as a service, it's lambdas, but it's also storage as a service like S3 and data as a service like Snowflake, like DynamoDB and Q as a service like S SNS, like, a, like, like EventBridge, like Kinesis, like, a, and, and, and even Stripe, payment as a service and Twilio and SendGrid. So all these API based services that you just consume and they're like Lego pieces that you connect together and you just connect and you go and you start working and they up and running. This is how I define serverless today. And that's basically allowing you to run any application today with zero servers. That's a great definition that nice and clean on it. I think the, the Lego bricks really kind of clicked in my mind when you talked about that. Let's talk now about for business critical production applications. What are you seeing uh, in terms of adoption of serverless for those cases? That's, that's a great question because I think that we are in a critical point uh, of time in, in cloud native, in, in modern cloud in serverless uh, market. And, and I think it's an evolution, you know, when we started again, back in 2015, serverless was just one or two services, but we got to a critical mass of services, including DynamoDBs and S3 and, and Lambdas and EventBridge and all the other services and step functions that basically allow you 
to build your application based on serverless. And this critical point of the architecture of serverless being um, mature enough, being wide enough to allow you to do what you want, to have the confidence running serverless in production, to know that you have the tooling that you used to have in the past to monitor, to debug, to secure, uh, to understand cost. All of these are really coming together uh, this year. We actually see this year a bit of uh, end of last year, but this is what's driving a, a trend in the industry. I think it's still not known enough to many of, uh, of the organization or not wide enough or not public enough, but our customers are, are focused on, on cloud native and serverless. And we've seen a dramatic change in the last, in the last six months. And the main change is organizations that used to play around with serverless, that used to do non business critical usage of serverless because it's easy, because it makes sense, because it's fast. All of a sudden they got the confidence to do that with their business critical application in production. And this is a shift that we're, we're seeing. And that goes many times with, uh, with, with the technology maturity. You start, you play around with something, it makes sense, it makes sense, you get confidence and boom, this become more and more mainstream technology. And we're at the verge of that. In terms of, of, an, of a catalyst for that confidence, do you think that the events, the world events of the last 12 months and this acceleration of digital transformation, has that played any part in the maturation of the technology that's giving customers the confidence to adopt serverless? Yeah, I think I think it, it's, it's fascinating what we're seeing because I think the last the events uh, really push a organization to innovate because of different reasons, because they don't have the headcount. So they need to reduce the maintenance that they do. They need to reduce the, head, the developer headcount, the, the DevOps headcount. They need to reduce costs. Serverless is running all, only when it needs to run. So you pay only for what you use. So this is another method that our customer, for example, reduce their cost. Uh, so I think beyond the maturity of the architecture, uh, the, the push forward for optimization, for lower usage or lower, uh, lo lower usage of engineering force really pushed serverless forward. And this paradigm, once it worked for one team, it's viral. It's viral within organization and across organizations. So this team managed to reduce 50% of the cost and 70% of the uh, developers that need to maintain the production, let's duplicate that. And let's do that four times and five times and 10 times. And this is a point in time that we are. So that, that's a trend. And I think it's very much impacted by, uh, by the world economics. Interesting, that trend of virality. Let's dig into, you mentioned a couple of benefits. I heard reduction in total cost of ownership or costs. Talk to me about the Lumigo solution, the technology, and what some of those key benefits are that it is consistently delivering to your customers. Hmm. So I, I think, you know, the basic is that serverless makes a lot of sense, economical uh, maintenance. That's that, that's why, why the cloud providers are putting so much effort and 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 power in delivering more and more serverless maturity. One of the challenges that we see for almost any organization adopting the new technology, it goes back to, we understand the values, but at the end of the day, I need to make sure that if something goes wrong in production, I will know about it and I will know how to react and fix it in, in a matter of minutes, because that, that, that's, that's my service, that's my business. And I know how to do it in a server world where there's one server or three servers and everything running in the same server. I have the tools for that. And I want to go serverless. I want to go cloud native, but all of a sudden there are dozens of services that I consume via APIs and they're part of a bigger picture of my application. So I'm lacking many times the confidence, the tools, the, 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 the awareness of something goes wrong, I'll know about it and I'll be able to fix it. And, and this is where Lumigo comes in. So we build Lumigo from the ground up to be very much focused on the modern cloud, on serverless. And that means two main things that we provide uh, for our customers. 
Uh, one is, I would say one thing, we, we provide confidence. You can use serverless in production and you can rest assured that if something goes wrong, we will be the one alerting and we'll give you all the information to debug it. And we do it by two main things. Uh, one is the visibility that we create. Because we're connected to the environment, we alert on things that are relevant to serverless. It's not about CPU, it's not about uh, IO, it's about concurrency limits, it's about call start, it's about timeouts, it's about uh, reaching duration limits. These are the things that uh, we know to alert you about. It's very specific to the serverless services. And it's not a generic metric, it's serverless metric. So that's number one. Visibility, get an alert whenever something is about to go wrong. But what do you do then? Let's say I have 1 million invocations a day, and one of them is actually, I have a, a trigger, something went wrong. And this is where Lumigo allow the developers to debug. Basically, you click on a specific issue, and Lumigo tell you the entire story of what happened from the very beginning, an API gateway triggering a Lambda, um, writing to DynamoDB, triggering a Lambda, it tells you the entire story end to end of what happened with that specific request, with inputs, with outputs, with environment variables, all the thing the developer need in order to debug, to find the root cause, and then fix it in a matter of minutes. And that's the game changer that allow those organizations to run serverless with confidence. You talk about confidence, it's a word that I hear often when I'm talking with customers of, of um, vendors. It's not something to be underestimated. It's incredibly important that technology provide that confidence, especially given the events in the last year and a half that we've seen where suddenly folks couldn't get into data centers, for example. Talk to me a little bit about some of the customers. I saw from your website, some great brand names, but talk to me about a customer that you think really not only has that confidence that Lumigo is delivering, but is really changing their business and their approach to modern, modern monitoring with Lumigo. Yeah, uh, so there are several um, interesting, I'll choose um, maybe one of the more interesting cases, a company called Medtronic. Um, it, it's a, it's a, one of the largest uh, medical devices companies uh, in the US. Um, and it's very interesting because they have an, an IoT backend. Basically, they have medical devices around the world uh, that send IoT information uh, back to their cloud. And they get metrics, they run machine learning on that. And they took a strategic decision to run the system with serverless because it can scale automatically, because you can deploy one more million devices and they don't need to change anything and many, many other uh, benefits of serverless. And we met them back in uh, 20, end of 2019. They were looking for uh, exactly a solution that allows them to get issues and drill down to analyze those issues. Uh, and they were just in the, in the beginning, in the early days they had 20 million invocations requests per month. They knew they're going to scale. They knew that when they scale, they cannot correlate logs and under, try to understand what happened manually. They need a, a professional tool. And this is where they started uh, using Lumigo. And today, a year and a half after, they reached 1 billion invocations a month. Again, the same concept, IoT devices, medical devices, sending metrics and information for the backend for processing. And today, Lumigo is monitoring everything in that environment and alerts them from you're about to have a problem or you have an application error or so you have high latency, uh, you have spike of cost, all of that are covered by Lumigo. And the developers, once they get this to Slack to Pager Duty, we're just able to click on it, on it and drill down and see one by one requests that created the trigger that alert. And they can understand, again, the inputs, the output, the logs, the return values, everything I call it, uh, debugging heaven, because you don't need, it's always there, it's always post-mortem, you don't need to do anything. At the same time, you get the visibility and you can fix it uh, uh, because this is their production, this is their business critical application. Debugging heaven, I love that. That's for developers, <laughs> that is probably a nirvana state. I want to wrap up, Arez, just giving our folks in, uh, in the audience an overview of the relationship that Lumigo has with AWS. 
Mm. AWS is, is, is one of our um, uh, say strongest uh, partner. Uh, I think there's a great synergy uh, working with AWS. We've been partners for the last three years. Uh, and I think the reason for uh, the, you know, we, we're still, um, uh, AWS has you know, thousands, hundreds, uh, tens of thousands of partners. Uh, I think that this partnership is uh, specifically strong because there is a win-win relationship over here. On the one hand side, Domingo is very much invested on, on Amazon. Our customers are mostly Amazon customers and uh, we are solving, providing confidence for those customers to run serverless in production and, and answering a need of a customer. And this is also the, the win for Amazon. Amazon is basically have a great, great technology of serverless, but the lack of visibility, the lack of confidence is hindering the, the, the adoption. And uh, Amazon decided to, to work with Lumigo saying, we'll develop the core, we'll develop the services, we'll develop the serverless architecture, and you can use Lumigo for monitoring, for debugging, for everything that you need in order to run that in production. And that's have been very, very strong relationship that just grows as uh, we, we, we develop uh, together. And it, it's been, you know, on, 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 on working together with customers, introducing customers, um, but also on the technology level. Uh, for, for the audience who sees Amazon announcement on serverless, many times Domigo is a design partner, is part of the announcement of Domigo was a design partner and, and a launch partner and support the new feature out of the box. This is because we want to get the support as soon as possible, as soon as new features are released. So that's that's where we are today. Sounds like a very collaborative and symbiotic relationship. Ares, thank you for joining me on the program today, talking to us about some of the trends in serverless, some of the things that are catalyzing adoption, that visibility, that confidence that Lumigo delivers to its customers. We thank you for your time. Excellent, thank you very much, Lisa. Have a good day. You too. For Erez Berkner, I'm Lisa Martin. Thanks for watching this CUBE Conversation.